Mm. <sighs> no, I am not a cliche YouTuber. I just love coffee. And what's better than editing with a coffee, especially in the fall when it's warm? Don't judge me. <laughs> All right, so today we are gonna go over the awesome updates that Lightroom just came out. Welcome to a special Friday video. I was gonna save this for Monday, but then I was like, nah, you guys wanna edit this over the weekend. So I'm gonna put this video out on Friday. That way you can use this over the weekend. The masking updates that Adobe just came out with are so freaking awesome. And I'm gonna go through them so you can really understand them. So let's jump right in and get started. Will Simpson here and welcome to Exploring Photography. Let's get into Lightroom and go over these really cool updates. So in Lightroom, you'll notice on the right side here, there's a different look now. Instead of seeing the, the brush adjustment, the radial filter and the graduated filter, you simply see your circle, which is the masking tool. You still see the crop tool, the, the patch tool and the, eye, the red eye detection thing, but now the masking tool is alone, it's its own category. So if we click on this masking tool, it brings up this whole new menu of items. Now there's some familiar faces. You still have the brush tool, the linear gradient, which is the graduated filter with a fancier name, and the radial gradient, which is the radial filter with a fancier name. <laughs> but you also see the select subject and the select sky tools, which are awesome. And you see color range and luminance range, which used to be the range masks that only were available when you used the brush, the graduated filter, or the radial filter. Now they can be used as their own masking tool, which is incredible. There's also depth range, and I haven't played in with that much yet, but we're just gonna go over this quick selection stuff really fast. So the first thing is the select subject. If you select it, it will select your subject. It'll determine what the subject is of the image. Obviously, the bigger the contrast between the subject and the rest of the image, the better it'll work. So in this case, it works really well with a girl in a red dress on a blue background, but you can see it picked it out pretty quickly. Now, you might notice that your masking panel is here, or it could be over here and show up there. You can adjust it however you want. So this here, you can move around if you click this little line, or you can put it in your menu bar over here. Totally up to you. For this demonstration, I'm gonna keep it over here. That way we can see a little bit more of it. Now you have the same options as before. If you press O on your keyboard, it toggles on and off the overlay. You can also change the color. Click this box here and you can change the color whatever color you want of your mask. I'm gonna keep it green so it shows. You can also show the opacity, not at all, or fully on. We're just gonna keep it at 75%. You can also select whether you want it affected area or unaffected area. I don't know why you would ever show the unaffected area with the highlight. Maybe it's just how it works out for you, but I'm not sure. So we're gonna keep it affected area for now. Now you also have some other ways you can show the mask. If you click these three dots, you have color overlay, which is what you see now. You have cover, color overlay with black and white, which is the image is black and white, except for the masked part. You have image on black and white. So the image is black and white, but the selection is in color. You have image on black, you have image on white, and then you have white on black. And if you're familiar with Photoshop, you know that white reveals and black hides. So this is showing that the white part has the mask, has the effects on it of this filter. So for this example, we're just gonna do color overlay because it seems to be the most common standard one. Uh, let's go ahead and delete these, this mask here. You can delete the mask. And then let's create another one and select the sky, which is also awesome quickly determines where the sky is and boom, you have the sky selected. So these are super, super awesome updates which will make editing much faster. Let's say we just wanted to darken the sky. Well, we just darken it and there we go. Let's add a new mask, plus create mask, select subject. And let's say we wanna brighten her a little. Good, add a little bit of contrast to her. And there we go, we've made a few quick adjustments and the image is already looking better. But here is where Adobe outdid themselves. Let's create a radial filter, a radial gradient, now that it's called. And let's create a circle right here. Now you can adjust this by adjusting the feather. You see the inner circle is the full effect, and then the feather starts from the inner circle to the outer circle. So if you adjust that, the feather, you'll notice that the inner circle gets smaller with more of a feather, or 
take all the feather away and the inner circle disappears because it's actually over here at the full outer circle. I generally do a full feather, but for this example, we're gonna do no feather. All right, so we have our radial filter here and we're gonna darken it so you can really see the difference. Let's just go ahead and blacken it out. Now, if you click that mask, before I get into it though, if you double click on this, you can rename it, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. Unless this is sky, this is subject. Allows you to stay really, really organized rather than those dots that you remember from the previous Lightroom version where it's like you find the dot that is your subject or is your dodging and burning or whatever it is. This is way more simple. You just name it and you're good to go. All right, so let's get back to our example. So if you click mask three, let's say, let's just rename this example. Okay, good. So if you click the mask, it'll give you an option, add or subtract. Now it's very simple. Add adds to the mask, subtract takes away from the mask. So if we click add, it gives you all of these awesome options. You can add everything. So let's keep it really simple right now and let's add another radial gradient. Good, so if I do this, perfect. Now we have a radial gradient and a radial gradient. So these two are getting the effect. If I press subtract, another radial gradient, and I draw in the middle, look at that. Now I've subtracted from those radial gradients. I have three filters all affecting the same mask and it's giving me exactly what I want. Now here is the really cool part that makes this tool really powerful. It is the intersecting option. If you press and hold alter option on your keyboard, you will see intersect. Now what this means is this is going to affect where these filters intersect. So let's click that and click another radial gradient. Let's draw this one right here. So that means wherever this radial gradient and the other radial gradients that you've applied intersect is where it's going to show or not show. In this case, you'll notice that this one is here, this one is here, and where they intersect is where you're getting the filter. You're not getting it over here, you're not getting it over here. If I then move this over here, now I'm getting the mask here and here, but still not here because this middle one is subtracting. This is a really cool add because it allows you to be very precise in your edits and make sure that you get exactly how you want it to look, to look. So let's take this one and invert it. So let's click on these three dots here and click invert or uninvert. And now it's saying wherever these intersect don't have a filter. So if I move this around, now I don't have the filter here, don't have the filter here. It's very similar to subtract, but you'll see when we get a little bit farther. So let's go ahead and delete this. So let's click these three dots and let's delete example. Good, so it deletes the whole thing. Now let me show you how powerful this really, really is. Let's add a sun flare in the left side of this image. Create mask, let's do a radial gradient and let's add a sun flare. We're gonna add a ton of feathering and we're going to brighten up the image. Okay, good. So great, that looks awesome in actually no way. We're gonna add a little orange here, but you notice it's peeking over the rock, it's getting on her here, and it, it doesn't look great. So how do we fix that? Well, originally we would do a luminance mask, but in this case, we're going to press and hold option, we're gonna press intersect, and we're simply going to press select sky. Boom, done. Press O on the keyboard to show the mask so you see, and look, it's completely taken it out of the model, it's taken it out of the foreground, and it's only in the sky. If you take your mouse and hover over the mask of the sky, you see that it's the, it has the entire sky highlighted. If you hover over the radial gradient, it'll show you where the radial is. But because we're only affecting the parts of the radial filter that are on the sky, because of the intersect feature, we're only affecting that part of the sky, which is just incredible. It makes it so, 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 so much more targetable. Let's take this a step further. Let's do another mask. Let's do linear gradient and let's pull this up here, the graduated filter, and let's go ahead and target only the dark part. Let's, let's show you a little dodge and burn trick, which I absolutely love. So we're going to then press and hold alt or option plus intersect and we're gonna go down to luminance mask. Now you'll notice that the luminance slider is a little different. Now if you haven't messed with this before, consider it a histogram. Left is black and it then goes shadows, midtones, highlights, whites. 
So if we click this little box here and slide it here, we can then pull, start to pull our effect out of the blacks and we can affect just the midtones. These little arrows here are kind of the feathering, so you can do it all the way, or it's how quickly the effect disappears on the color. So right here, it's like midtones only, a little bit of highlights, more highlights, and blend into the whites. And same with this side. Midtones only, a little bit of shadows, blend into the blacks, and so on and so forth. It's, it's how, how much you want it to be smooth. But in this case, we're doing a dodge and burn trick. So we're going to darken this and we only want this to affect the darks. So we're gonna slide this over here and open it up to affect just a shade of the midtones. Now you see this little weird coloring? That's because of the fall off. We don't have it where we want it. We only want this affecting the dark. So we're gonna take this out even more, pull this out of there. So we're just affecting the blacks and the shadows really. And then we're gonna up the, this a little bit. And then if you wanna see the before and after, well, let's show it first. So you see how it's only affecting the darks, the really dark parts. It just really enhances the dark, but that's the lum the power of the luminance math. So dark before, after, you see how it just darkens that dark area to create a little bit of more contrast in your image. One cool thing I forgot to mention is if you have the mask panel open here, this little switch right here, if you click it, you can toggle all of your masks on and off. And you can really see a difference here. So this is before, and this is after with just the mask. It's made a huge, huge difference just on those. But let's do one more. Let's create a mask. Let's select the subject. Let's say we only want to affect her dress. So let's zoom in here. Let's click and hold the Alter Option button, press Intersect. And we want to intersect it with a color range. Simply select the dress and boom. It has selected only the colors of that. And let's say we wanna just kinda of darken the dress down a little or brighten it up, add some uh, little less clarity, add some dehaze, really sharpen, sharpen the saturation and darken it, and there we go. Now with two clicks, we've selected her dress and it's made a huge difference. So before, after, I mean, these things are amazing. It's gonna take a little bit of practice to kind of learn it and get with the flow of how to, how to use it really well, but this has really improved Lightroom's ability to mask and highlight and edit. Overall, this is an awesome update that Adobe did. And that's it, that's all for this video. Now, if you really, really wanna up your editing skills in Lightroom, go check out this video right here because once you understand the color calibration and how to use it in Lightroom, your photos are going to stand out even more than they already do. So go check out that video and I'll see you guys over there. See ya.